Hey everyone, I'm outside. This could have potentially been a bad idea. There's dogs barking. It's really hot out. I don't know why I wore a long sleeve shirt. What What is wrong with me? I used to look at these functional artists and by functional I mean creating a lot of work consistently. There's, there's a fly that almost flew in my eye. Making a lot of art a lot of whatever it is that they're doing and I would just wonder like how where are they getting this this motivation where are they getting all these ideas why can't I have all these ideas why didn't I think of it first this was years ago I wanted to make a lot of paintings but I couldn't finish a piece like I would start a painting and just get stuck on it and not know what to do and then I would lose the motivation and I would never finish the painting and I just would just leave it and that would be it. It would take months to come back to the piece and actually figure out what I have to do. Meanwhile, not even creating anything new, while that one is just there, I would just you know, get hung up on this one painting and, and think, oh my gosh, I can't start anything until I finish this one. I just can't finish it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't have the motivation. What is going on? Over time, I was able to figure out certain things that affected my creative process, affected me, and gradually I just started being a functional artist. As artists, we all create differently. We all work differently. There's no one-size-fits-all method that will work for everybody, but this worked for me, so I thought I would share it, and maybe you can apply one or two or none of these things to your life, or all of them, and see if that works for you. Okay. Our art is a product of us, and we are a product of not only our environment, but our upbringing, and the certain things we encounter and go through as people. Your present day, your present circumstances also have an effect on how you feel. I used to associate myself with very toxic people. I had just like this habit of surrounding myself with insecure, miserable people. Um, probably because I was insecure and miserable myself, but you know, it didn't really help my situation. I was just constantly surrounded by miserable people. So it took me cutting some people out, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not trying to say that they were bad people, but they were bad for me. They affected me very negatively, and that's not good for your art. <laughs> it really is not. Unless you're like channeling that into your art, which I did as well. Generally, those people tend to not support us and not really be very motivating. Sometimes that can be family, and that's when things really get tough is when you have family that is supposed to love you and care about you and support you. They don't support what you want to do. They don't support your dreams. They just discourage you. And I'm sorry if you're going through that because it sucks. You just have to ignore it. You have to find a way to ignore it. But anyway, one way that I was able to discover what was good and bad for me and what I needed and didn't need was by writing. I have a very cluttered mind. Well, I wouldn't say it's cluttered, but it's very busy. I think a lot. I overthink a lot, just about everything. A lot of times that can interfere with my creative flow, which requires me to be a little bit more calm and focused and concentrated. My crazy ass brain will be like blah, 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 blah. And so first thing I do when I wake up is I write. I write like a few pages of whatever is on my mind. It's not really a diary because I'm not logging my life and what's going on and like everything I do in a day. It's not like that. Although sometimes that does happen. Sometimes I'll write certain events that I did or, or plan to do. I write just about anything that's on my mind. It could be anger, confusion, fear, hopes, dreams, uh, painting ideas, video ideas, anything really. I just, I write it down and I get it out of my head because if that's what's if that's what I wake up with on my mind, like that's gonna linger throughout the day. So if I can just somehow address it, confront it, and deal with it in the morning, normally it won't bother me as much throughout the day. And I use it to write good things too because that helps as well and I'm getting bitten by a bug. There's a car, there's a car, there's a car. Goodbye, car. So through the writing process, it was so helpful to me. Um, 
I discovered so much about myself. I wouldn't actually read back on my page that morning. I would just write it, close the book, and then a few months later, I would read back on all the things I wrote, and you don't really remember all these specific details that you think about when you wake up every morning. So it gave me so much perspective. From that I was able to analyze certain things and figure out what I needed to do. So that was just like the cleanup process to set the, the positive foundation for a more stable creative flow. The other thing I discovered is that focusing on just one painting alone doesn't work for me. I am not one of those artists that can just sit through a single painting consistently and finish it. I just don't work that way. Some artists do. They have to focus on one painting at a time. I will get distracted, I will get bored, and I have to switch my attention to something else. So I discovered that I have to be working on at least five paintings at a time, meaning that I'm working on one painting and whenever I get distracted or bored, which I have like a day maximum <laughs> patience limit for a single painting. So whenever I get bored of one painting and I'm stuck or frustrated and I don't know what to do, I can immediately switch to another one. And when I get bored of that one, I can switch to another one. And by the time I go through working on all these paintings gradually throughout the day or throughout a few days, when I go back to the original piece that I was stuck on, suddenly I'm not stuck anymore. It's like I shifted my focus around so much and let that old painting like linger and digest somewhere in my mind and suddenly I have all this new clarity, my eyes are fresh, I can see everything I need to do and I'm excited for it again. Like the motivation for that painting is back. So that's how my process is now. I always have at least five unfinished paintings going at a time that I can just switch to. I cannot do one painting in a sitting. I don't work that way. I like to take my time, but if I'm taking my time, I have to be able to switch my focus. My brain wants to be very tedious and create something very crisp and, and accurate, and sometimes I can get really sucked into that mentality and really get stuck on a painting for a long time. I just have to like figure out a point to let go of a painting and not get too sucked into trying to be perfect because that doesn't make me happy as an artist. It doesn't make the process any more fun. If I feel free and creative and uh, more spontaneous with my brush strokes, that's the work that's pretty exciting for me. So yeah, take your own references. Your work is going to be 100% original. I mean, think about it. If you look for a photograph online, and you try to paint that, somebody else could have already painted that. And that exact image already exists. And it doesn't exist from you, it exists from somebody else who originally took the photograph. So that's why I like to use my own references and create my own references. You don't need a perfect camera. Nowadays, everyone has a camera phone. You can do that if you want to. I've actually used several pictures that I've taken on my phone that I turn into paintings later. You can get your friends to model for you, you can go out in nature, take pictures of whatever, but try and be more original with your work. You're gonna feel better about it, or at least I did. Again, there's no one size fits all for any creative process. We all function differently as artists, but this is just what worked for me and what helped me stay motivated and create consistently. When I have all these files of reference material that I've created all backed up for me and ready to use, it's not really a matter of trying to think of some grand master idea that's going to be perfect and amazing. It's like, I have my reference material and I can choose from it what I'm excited to paint, what I'm interested in. So yeah, I think I'm rambling at this point. Anyways, well thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me rant and get bit by bugs and distracted by cars and all that fun stuff. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a car. I'll see you in my next video and I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye guys!